Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of God's love. Let us humbly call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you give us new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve for Saul, whom I have rejected as king of Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. But Samuel replied, How can I go? Saul will hear of it and kill me. To this the Lord answered, Take a heifer along and say, 
I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I myself will tell you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I point out to you. Samuel did as the Lord had commanded him. When he entered Bethlehem, the elders of the city came trembling to meet him and inquired, Is your visit peaceful, O seer? He replied, Yes, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. So cleanse yourselves and join me today for the banquet. He also had Jesse and his sons cleanse themselves and invited them to the sacrifice. As they came, he looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because he sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and presented him before Samuel, who said, The Lord has not chosen him. Next, Jesse presented Shama, but Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of this. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep, Samuel said to Jesse. Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ready, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel, with a horn of oil in hand, anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. When Samuel took his leave, he went to Ramah. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have found David my servant. I have found David my servant. Once you spoke in a vision, and to your faithful ones you said, On a champion I have placed a crown. Over the people I have set a youth. I have found David my servant. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I anointed him that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. I have found David my servant. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior, and I will make him the firstborn, highest of the kings of the earth. I have found David my servant. Please stand. So, Lord, give joy to my heart. Your teaching is light to my eyes. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. 
Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was passing through a field of grain on the Sabbath, his disciples began to make a path while picking the heads of grain. At this, the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and he and his companions were hungry, how he went into the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of offering that only the priests could lawfully eat and shared it with his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That is why the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, after Saul, the first king of Israel displeased the Lord because Saul did not obey the orders of the Lord. The Lord instructed Samuel to go to Bethlehem to anoint the new king of Israel chosen by the Lord. And in our first reading today, we have seen how Samuel, using his own standards, failed several times in identifying who among the sons of Jesse was chosen by God to succeed King Saul until God himself pointed out to Samuel his choice, the youngest of the sons of Jesse, David. Not even Jesse thought that David was the one chosen by God. Ni hindi sumagi sa isip ng kanyang ama na si David pala ang pinili ng Diyos. And so, Samuel and even Jesse learned an important lesson that day. God told them, Not as man sees, does God see. Man sees the appearance, but God looks in the heart. My dear brothers and sisters, that is also an important lesson for all of us today. Iba ang pananaw ng Diyos at iba ang nakikita nating mga tao. God uses a different standard, a standard so different from worldly and human standards that is even obvious in our gospel today when Jesus had an argument with the scribes and Pharisees about Sabbath law. God works on a different plane. And so, we have to understand that when we make decisions, when we make choices, when options are presented before us, let us not depend on human standards alone. 
Let us not rely simply on what we think because oftentimes what we think and our standards are limited and are prone to error and mistake. Wag lamang umasa sa ano ba yung tingin ko? Ano ba yung pamantayan ko? Kasi yung tingin natin at pamantayan natin limitado lang at madalas nagkakamali. When we are made to choose or in making decisions, let us not even rely on what others think. Minsan tatanungin natin, o ano ba ang tingin mo? Ano kaya ang pipiliin ko? Ano kaya ang desisyon na gagawin ko? Inaasa natin sa ibang tao. But let us not rely on what others, other people think because what other people think could be biased, could be prejudiced, could be self-serving, and could be unfair. When we are made to choose, when options are presented before us, when we are making decisions, let us use only the standards of God. Let us ask God to enlighten our minds so that we may see the choice He has already made for us. Because that is what discernment is all about. It is not about making my choice. It is about identifying the choice that God has already made for me. Ganun yung nakita natin sa unang pagbasa sa pagpili ni Samuel kay David. Ipinakita ng Diyos kay Samuel ang pinili na ng Diyos. Hindi si Samuel ang pumili. Si Samuel lamang ang nagsabi, ito ang pinipili ng Diyos. We have to ask God to give us wisdom, understanding, to enlighten our minds so that we may be able to identify clearly the choice that God already made for us. And we have to trust that choice of God. We have to trust trust the standards of God because after all, God is all wise. God is wisdom himself. God knows better than we do. My dear brothers and sisters, it has often been asked, which should we follow, our head or our heart? The Lord tells us today, follow your faith. Madalas nating tinatanong yan, ano ba ang susundin ko? Yung sinasabi ng isip ko o yung sinasabi ng puso ko? Ang sabi ng Diyos, sundin mo ang yung pananampalataya. Follow your faith. Because in faith, our head, our heart, and God meet. Please stand. Let us pray to God our Father, who has called all His sons and daughters to become free in His Son, Jesus Christ. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians may regard the commandments of God as doors to freedom from sin and ways to serve God and people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
that legislators everywhere may make laws that are humane and serve the good of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer, that we may never put law above people, but practice first the great commandment of loving one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer, that those who are worried of their sickness may find consolation and strength for those who care for them and love them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That eternal rest may be upon our beloved dead. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Lord God, let every command of yours be to us an invitation to love and to serve our brothers and sisters, to understand and to respect, to guide and be guided. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. 
Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Maria, in the name of 